So we've just completed the orientation for Michelle Barrett Summer Scholars Summer Camp Program at Arizona State University and we've come out here to the Polytechnic campus which is didn't exist when I went to ASU. It's part of the old military base what was once a military base here at Williams Field Airport and uh, eh, yeah Michelle had no questions. That doesn't surprise me. I wouldn't have had any questions either. But uh, I think it's going to be good for her. It'll be like going to summer camp. She's never done that before. Well, sort of. But, you know, and then there's uh, people that you can talk to. Because she likes that. And stuff. And then there's learning-y stuff, too. Do you want to do some learning-y stuff, Michelle? You could do some learning-y stuff. You know, learning. Only like learning, not quite learning, but similar. No? Teenagers. So, I'm gonna talk a little bit about making videos. Um, I have a little story, but uh, first I'll just do a little background. I have uh, been doing videos for a long time, and, and I'm not good at it. Um, I have some miscellaneous training here and there in it, and some uh, tools, as many people do now. Um, but I certainly would not consider myself a competent filmmaker. Um, but I have fun doing it, so that's all that really matters. It's not about the... It, it's not about the adulation of the crowd it's about the enjoyment of it uh, anyway so I've been trying to step up my video output a little bit and try to get it consistent trying to get some stuff going um, I'm doing you know I've been doing the Fusion Patrol podcast for years and now I'm doing the Fusion Patrol video podcast and I'm trying to work that out so one of those comes out every Wednesday and they're like three to five minutes long um, I'm trying to put out a uh, actually Thursday uh, for the Fusion Patrol video and then I'm trying to put out one of my uh, Lone Locust videos so that's just my channel uh, on Wednesdays and uh, and then I'm trying to put at least one Tedium Unlimited out uh, every week and often two although I haven't really got that down to a, a, a better schedule than uh, um, than just a couple kind of waited here and there towards the weekend, but I don't have set days that are coming out. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of the American uh, Tries American Snacks videos. I've got several in the can that are scheduled to come out on my Lone Locust channel. And uh, th so there's a bit of a story behind that. Um, th there's tons of, tons of channels on YouTube uh, that... So, okay, let's take a step back. Prior to the Fusion Patrol podcast, there was the Fusion Patrol public access TV show, which I used to do in the early 90s. Yeah, early 90s. I'm, I'm not going to say late 80s, but it might actually have been some in the late 80s, but I think it's all early 90s, <clears throat> early to mid 90s. Anyway, um, I liked when we were doing that, I liked to watch it, other programs that were on public access and make fun of them use their format point out kind of things that I found to be slightly absurd or silly or just poorly done or whatever it happened to be um, whether that was successful or not is another question although a local radio DJ after watching one of our episodes did call us a Monty Python-esque comedy troupe and let me tell you something proudest working moment of my artistic career uh, was to be compared to a Monty Python-esque comedy troupe. Um, uh, not in my wildest dreams would I um, go so far as to say anything like that other than, hey, somebody else said it. Um, certainly highly influenced. That notwithstanding, okay, even here on YouTube, 
my mind works the same way. It, it does work the same way. It's fascinating. It's fascinating to go back and look at some of these old, old videos. And I'll be watching them, and either I will, and I haven't seen them for years, and I'll either see the joke coming, and I'll go, oh, this is what I would say. And I would. Or I wouldn't see it coming, but when I say it, I'm like, oh, yes, I was very clever. <laughs> it's like, uh, anyway diverged from the topic again. The topic was that I've been watching a lot of YouTube now, and so when I tend to make my videos, I am sort of making fun of YouTube videos uh, at this stage. So right now I'm just, I'm kind of working through these Americans Try American Snacks uh, videos because of all of the videos where you have the Irish Try Japanese Snacks or the English Try American Snacks or etc. etc. Nobody ever has Americans Try American Snacks. And so that's uh, what I'm going with. Um, but it's kind of funny because I'm I'm learning something as I go. One, we eat a lot of corn. Uh, I mean, that's a, been a total surprise in a way. Is it how many things that are snacks are made of corn or corn products or corn byproducts, uh, or you would put on corn. And uh, 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 th that's kind of one. And the other one is, as I've tried to get organized with this, um, so there's a I'm following kind of a stock pattern, although I'm beginning to break the pattern intentionally to, um, because it's it's a series with a finite uh, run to it. And there's only maybe eight or nine episodes out of this, ten at the most. Um, and they're kind of serious, but of course they're not. And so uh, I've got a formula there where we go to the cabinet of snacks and we get out of something. We find the snack of the day. And then we eat it and then explain what it tastes like and remem remembering the um, remembering the song uh, it's still rock and roll to me by Billy Joel you can't get the sound from a story in a magazine right how can I explain what something tastes like in video it doesn't it doesn't make sense um, uh, so but I do my best. Uh, and then I go through the ingredients of the... Um, and then whatever. And depending on, on where I'm going with it. Um, the problem is, is that I'm... I am understand the necessity of production. And so it doesn't make any sense for me to shoot the cabinet of snacks and then go in and then film myself doing the taste test and then go back and shoot another cabinet of snacks and do another taste test. It makes more sense to have five or six snacks lined up and do all the cabinet of snacks, then come in and do all of the um, um, uh, taste tests. Uh, that way, fewer camera setups, easier to get the lighting and the sound and, and whatnot going. Um, but what it means is that if I don't do all the taste tests, and that was another problem, I did about four in a row once, and, uh, that was too much. You know, by the fourth one, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. so I got all the cab, I bought a bunch of snacks, and then I did all the cabinet of snacks, so I've got a bank of these things, uh, and now I have to go shoot the, the videos, well, Sometimes when I'm not in a position to do a video, I'm sitting around the house going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I want a snack. And I've got this big pile of snacks there, and I can't eat them. I literally can't eat them when I want a snack. And so last night, uh, I, I actually went ahead and I said, nah, screw it, I'm going to eat this snack. And uh, I'll just... I'll just write that episode off, or I'll have to go buy another one or something. And as I walked away... Um, to eat it here in my office, uh, my phone and my tripod was here, and I said, oh, what the heck, I'll just set the camera up, and I'll do it here in the room. Um, so it was a, a very much, and then I sort of kind of uh, tried to play off the idea that, uh, you know, it's getting invasive, and maybe I'm tired of people watching me eat snacks. Um, it, it's all part of the performance. Um, but in this case, it was completely and utterly... Uh, extemporaneous. It was just, it was just a, I'm having that candy bar, and that's all there is to it, kind of moment. So that's uh, that's the story of uh, this week's um, filmed 
version of an American Tries American Snacks, which are coming out on Wednesdays on the Lone Locust channel. And don't forget, there's the Fusion Patrol channel, um, which has a sort of science fiction y things. And, uh, and then there's this channel, which you're already on. But if you want to take a look at those other channels, and uh, you know, there's that whole thing you could do, which is to um, like, comment, and subscribe to all of them. Just go and subscribe. I'm, I make almost a hundred dollars every year or two on my YouTube videos from Google. We could make that number be like 150 if we try really hard. If we try. Anyway, um, I'm probably not done with this video. I just wanted the opportunity to give you the like kind of thing to talk about the channels. Um, I've uh, I've got a new power drill that I bought, and I'll uh, probably give you a tour of that before the weekend is over. And since uh, I've still got all day tomorrow, I'm not going to close this one off just yet, despite the fact that this is 10 minutes of rambling in this one shot, which is usually more than enough. Once mankind has begun tinkering with his shape and form and content of his food, the technological limits are basically limitless, and we can have new and better forms of food. Take, for example, the chicken fry. Let me demonstrate. This is a chicken fry. Chickens do not naturally come in this, but they have been improved and made better by extruding them and placing them in a tasty coating. And now we have a new phenomenon. The chicken fry ring. Food technology done right 